Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. Alright, guys and girls. It's time to get cracking. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about alkenes. And there's three main parts to today's session. We're going to start by talking about general features of alkenes, just to give us a general idea of what alkenes are about. We'll then move on to the addition reactions that alkenes undergo. And we'll finish by talking about how to draw energy diagrams, not just for alkene reactions, but for any reaction you might encounter. Okay, so we're going to finish by talking about energy diagrams, how to draw them, and also these things called carbocation rearrangements. Okay, but if that doesn't sound familiar to you, don't worry. I'm just trying to tell you where we're going in today's session. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out by talking about the general features of alkenes. Okay, so the first piece of general information to give you about alkenes is its structure. What does an alkene look like, okay? Okay, so what do you guys think of when you hear the word alkene? Well, you should be thinking, hey, I've heard of something that sounds just like that. What was it? Oh yeah, alkanes and alkynes. And these are all part of the same family of compounds, right? Alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, these are all just hydrocarbon compounds, right? Compounds that are made of hydrogens and carbons, hydrocarbons. Okay, so the only difference between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes were the number of hydrogens attached, how saturated these compounds were with hydrogens. Remember, alkanes, these are completely saturated hydrocarbons, meaning that they have the maximum number of hydrogens attached. Okay, alkenes and alkynes, however, don't have the maximum number of hydrogens attached, so we call these unsaturated hydrocarbons. Okay, so alkanes completely saturated, alkenes and alkynes unsaturated hydrocarbons. Okay, so alkanes, these have the maximum number of hydrogens attached, meaning that these compounds are made of all single bonds. Alkenes and alkynes, however, don't have the maximum number of hydrogens attached, but how do they make up for missing these hydrogens? by having multiple bonds, right, you guys? So alkenes, these have double bonds, and alkynes, these have triple bonds, okay? So let's write some of this stuff down. Okay, so what I've written up here is that alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons, meaning that they don't have the maximum number of hydrogens attached to the carbons in the compound. And this is implied by its formula, CnH2n. So this is saying for every n number of carbons, you have twice the number of hydrogens. But this isn't the maximum number of hydrogens attached like we saw with alkanes. Remember, in the alkanes chapter, we wrote down that the formula for an alkane was CnH2n plus 2. And this was the formula for the maximum number of hydrogens attached for any given number of carbons. So as you can see, if you compare alkanes versus alkenes, then alkenes are missing these extra two hydrogens per carbon, making this unsaturated hydrocarbon compound. Okay, so an alkene makes up for missing these two hydrogens per carbon by having a double bond. Okay, so the next piece of general information I want you to know about alkenes is their hybridization. Okay, so, so far hybridization might not seem like a big deal to you guys, but it plays a big role in how these compounds react with other compounds, okay? Because hybridization, remember, determines the compound's shape and also its bond angles. Okay, so remember, alkanes had sp3 hybridization making them a tetrahedral shape and bond angles of 109.5 degrees 
alkenes, if you remember, these have hybridization of sp2, giving them a trigonal planar shape, giving them bond angles of 120 degrees. Okay, so let's write that down and talk about why this is important. Okay, so I've written up here that the hybridization of an alkene is sp2, giving it a trigonal planar shape, giving it bond angles of 120 degrees. Okay, so go ahead and write this down, and let me show you an example of what an alkene looks like. Okay, so let's take, for example, ethylene. Ethylene is the simplest alkene you can get. So let's take a look at this to examine the structure of an alkene. And ethylene looks like this. It's gonna have a CH2 that's double bonded to another CH2. And go ahead and draw this out like this so we can examine the shape of this compound. Okay, so let's point some things out on our alkene diagram. And let's focus in on this carbon of the alkene. Realize whatever I say about this carbon will also be true about this carbon, but let's just focus in on this carbon for right now, okay? So we said that alkenes are sp2 hybridized. So this carbon of the alkene is gonna have sp2 hybridization, which is gonna give it a trigonal planar shape and bond angles of 120 degrees, okay? So that means between here and here, here and here, here and here, these atoms are separated by 120 degree bond angles. Okay, so to make the structure of an alkene a little bit easier to imagine, I went ahead and made a cardboard cutout of our alkene, okay? So check this out. We've got our carbon in the center, the two hydrogens on the sides, and the CH2 group that's up top. And hey, we even have our double bond cut out to represent our alkene, okay? So things that I want you to take home from this diagram. Carbons of the double bond are sp2 hybridized, giving this thing a trigonal planar shape and bond angles of 120 degrees. Okay, but the main thing I want you to see here is the shape. Okay, because these things are trigonal planar in shape. And what does it mean to be trigonal planar? Well, planar, this means that this thing is all in the same plane. These atoms are all in the same plane, making this thing flat, flat as a pancake, flat as this piece of paper that I cut out, okay? But what's the significance of a flat compound? Well, hey, you guys, when alkenes, when these double bonds, when these trigonal planar shapes react with other compounds, they can react from either the bottom or from the top without preference, okay? So since this thing is flat, then it's not gonna have a preference to react from either the bottom or from the top. It will react from the bottom or from the top equally, okay? So make sure to keep this in mind when we go over the reactions that alkenes undergo, okay? Trigonal planar compounds can react equally from the bottom or from the top. Okay, so that was the structure of alkenes. Now I wanna tell you a little bit more about how these alkenes are put together. How these double bonds, these multiple bonds form in alkenes. And we're gonna explain this by talking about the molecular orbital diagram for an alkene, okay? Okay, so let's take a little closer look at how these alkenes, how these double bonds are put together. And we're gonna study this by looking at the molecular orbital diagram of an alkene, okay? So let's look at the molecular orbital, the MO diagram. 